as 2023 is progressing as we are entering into this new crazy years every year <laughs> i always see that psychological problems disorders are getting rampant more and more 10 years 5 year, 5 10 years back when i would do consultations i would get primarily career consultations or relationship readings you know like okay when will i get a job when will i have this career that career should i do job business or you know will i marry this girl when will i marry somebody you know will it work with this person or not what or what's going to be the situation right uh, but from last two three years or especially last one or two years i would say i'm seeing there's a ton of psychological uh, problems that people are facing, especially uh, I would not attribute it just to COVID, but in general, uh, people are facing a lot of psychological issues for what not reason, you know, families are breaking apart, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, that's creating so many problems, right? But nonetheless, uh, we need to identify uh, using astrology before the person asks you, before when you are talking to the client, before when the client sees you, because the chart will tell you certain things which only you will know and it is possible that that person himself or herself is not aware. So you have to tell the client, my dear sir, my dear madam, maybe this is a disorder that you have and you need to take treatment. So... There are many disorders, of course, you know, but primarily uh, I have grouped them into like, you know, four or five disorders. Okay, You can say them, they're like disease, disorder or whatever you can give any psychological, psychiatric name into it. That, that is up to you. Uh, this is not a class on technical aspects of psychology or psychiatry or psychology versus psychiatry. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> So if some of the technical terms which I use here are not correct as per medical standards, then I'm sorry, I'm not an expert in this, but I can give you the astrological uh, inputs from it, okay? All right, if you're new, then please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if you want a consultation, my website is down below. Oh, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you'll find him irrespective of which psychological uh, disorder you find in yourself or in me or in anybody all right so before we get into these top five psychological disorders what causes these disorders you know, in general these are uh, if you talk to people in general you will see that they will say oh moon is responsible you know like for example if they say if moon is in scorpio or moon is afflicted by mars saturn rahu ketu or, um, yeah, if uh, moon is in the Dustana houses, like 6th, 8th, 12th, uh, then these problems occur. Well, this is only 20 to 30 percent of the story, which means it is very important to have a good moon in the horoscope. But uh, does it mean if you just have a good moon, uh, you will never have any disorder? Or does it mean if you have a bad moon, you will uh, always have disorders? Well, certainly not. So that is exactly what uh, I want to clear today. You know, it is not just the moon. Okay, the moon is the mind. But what are the things that are affecting the mind? That's something which we uh, need to study actually. Okay. So the first challenge or you could say, you know, first disease or disorder, whatever you say, you know, it's depression. Okay. And we have the classic moon-Saturn combination, right? Like, for example, moon and Saturn are together or Saturn is aspecting the moon. So Saturn aspects the 3rd, 7th and 10th from wherever it sits. So if your moon is in 3rd, 7th or 10th from Saturn, not from the ascendant, then your moon is under the aspect of Saturn. Now, this moon Saturn yoga is known as Vish Yoga in astrology, as you know. But what is this wish? Wish does it mean you know there's a lot of poison which is there in your life? You know a lot of suffering. Uh, does it mean that? Well, not necessarily. Uh, see, you have to understand what the moon is. Moon is perception of the reality. Okay, reality is the sun. The moon is the perception. How do you 
see this world. The, the sun represents your kingdom. Like I have this mobile phone. This is mine. Oops, it's not visible. <laughs> but how do I feel about this mobile phone? Do I like this or I not like it? Okay, so do I like my job? Do I like my spouse? Do I like my car? Do I like my house? Do I like my parents? Do I like everybody? <laughs> that is what is the moon. So when moon is under the influence of Saturn, then what happens is we it is observed that the person focuses primarily on the negative stuff, negative things in their life. Again, this is not a yoga for not having any happiness. But the problem with this yoga is if you have this placement, then it can happen that you have thousand good things going on in, in your life. But there's one bad thing. Because of some uh, Mahadasha, Antardasha, you know, some problem or the other. And you forget all the 999 good things and then you are like uh, jumping into this directly. Okay. So th this, this is one reason why this could uh, be. And also the ascendant is your buddhi. Okay. So if there is a strong influence of Saturn uh, in the ascendant, so if Shani is in the Lagna or no, he's aspecting your lagna. Even then it can happen. <clears throat> okay. So then also the person can uh, only maybe, you know, uh, see the negatives. And another issue with Saturn connected to the Ascendant or the Ascendant Lord is the person is very much lazy and pessimistic at times. Why? Because the lagna shows your focus. When Saturn is aspecting the lagna, there is focus, but uh, I hope you understand. <laughs> right? So the, the, the focus is waning. It's like the moon, you know, waning, waxing. It's like uh, it's in doldrums, basically. So therefore, then you don't achieve your tasks, right? This is one problem. So Saturn associated with the moon or ascendant or ascendant lord can primarily indicate depression in one person's life. And again, depression is not just acute sadness. This can mean at various levels. You know, the person focuses on only the negatives. And the more you focus on the negatives, the more you realize that life is so miserable. So then the question is, what is the remedy? You know, the remedy is to uh, not be so much obsessed about one's own self. And how are you going to be not obsessed when you are uh, focusing on some higher power like you know spirituality god and uh, reading the bhagavad gita practicing yoga bhakti yoga preferably uh, doing doing seva to god and to uh, to humanity if you do all this then if you elevate your consciousness then you will remember i am not very important of course i am important but i am not the center of the universe okay so then you will neither have inferiority com complex nor will you have, uh, sorry, inferior inferiority complex nor will you have superiority complex, okay? Otherwise, if you have no higher focus in life, you will think you are the center of the universe and then the rest is history, right? All right, so then the next disease or disorder, as you say, is anxiety disorders, right? And then there are like, a hell lot of things you can say. The, if you go to psychology, psychiatry, there are like so many uh, diseases, disorders you'll find which are caused because of anxiety. Okay, so now, which are the planets that give anxiety? One is Mercury, the other one is Mars. Now, of course, uh, yesterday I made a video on two planets which help you to come out of problems. No, bounce back, right? Mercury and Mars, they are the two plants. But that is only if they are reasonably well placed. If your Mercury or Mars is badly placed, and especially if they are related to your Ascendant Lord, not Moon or Ascendant, Ascendant Lord, then there could be like hyper anxiety disorder, ADHD and all this, you know. Or there could be panic attacks, you know, there could be insomnia. Insomnia could also be caused because of depression. But 
Mars and Mercury can give you obsessive thinking, you know, overthinking, over, uh, yeah, there could be like too much nervousness and you, you, you will always feel that, you know, things are beyond your control, you know, so um, your mind is always raging, okay, and uh, you cannot practice anything in life if your mind is always raging, so you need to calm down the mind, you need to plan things, you need to do spiritual practices, you need to know your limitations, very important. One of the reasons why we have anxiety is because we are not realistic about our own limitations. Like I know people who ask me all the time, will I become a millionaire? And then I look at their chart and then I, I'm like, they're getting up at 10, 11 a.m. in the morning and then you ask them, what do you want to do in life? Oh, I don't know, but uh, is there a yoga for becoming a millionaire in the horoscope? Will the horoscope make me a millionaire? Well, the horoscope will make you a millionaire provided you are not like a, you're not like a lazy bum. If you are, then it won't make you, right? <laughs> You've got to work. So, you do not put efforts or you are putting efforts in the wrong direction. No, so Mercury will give you direction sometimes and a bad Mercury can give you bad directions. Okay. And Mars can either make you very slow or uh, too fast. So therefore, if Mercury and Mars are difficult and they are aspecting or in the ascendant, then there could be hyper anxiety. So you need to figure out how you can reduce the anxiety, you know, do some anaerobic exercises like, you know, running, uh, cycling, high intensity interval training, chant mantras, do some intense services, you know, uh, then like seva in the satsang program or go to langar and do some seva there <clears throat> or do high hiking mountain, you know, like rock climbing and all this, something very intense, you know, then then, if, yeah, it can reduce considerably. And good sleep, of course. But for having good sleep, you have to do all this. Otherwise, you won't get good sleep. So your mind is raging in the night. You are seeing dreams. You know, in the, in the dreams, you are seeing snakes. You know, you are flying. You are shouting, howling, cry, growling. And you are, you are not sleeping. And then in the day, you are anxious. And because of that, you are not getting sleep. It's like a vicious cycle, okay? <clears throat> now there's an another uh, should I say disaster <laughs> another disaster it's known as bipolar disaster <laughs> no bipolar what what is it basically it's like you have two different you know like personalities sometimes you are very good sometimes mm, you are very bad you know sometimes you are like very happy sometimes you are very sad no so lord krishna says in the gita na, brahma bhuta prasanna atma na so chati na kang shati sama sarveshu bhuteshu mad bhaktim lavate para brahma bhuta prasanna atma na so chati na kang shati a prasanna atma a person who uh, is not uh, na so chati na kang shati one who is not hankering nor Lamenting is uh, that person can begin spiritual life. His prasannatma is happy. Okay, so it is okay if you are too happy or too sad sometimes. Sometimes once in a while it's fine, but if it is like an everyday affair, uh, then uh, it's very troublesome because then nobody knows how you will behave when and which are some astrological indications that can cause this. So, if uh, your sun and moon are simultaneously afflicted, then this can happen. Because the sun and moon, they will, yeah, they show your personality, who you are. Okay, so if your sun and moon are uh, simultaneously badly afflicted, not just afflicted, but you know, uh, yeah, considerably afflicted, then you can say that this disorder can be there. So, if you have this disorder, what should you do? You know, you you should uh, closely associate with somebody who is very clear in their life. You know, what they want in life, uh, what they want to do, what they should do. Okay. Otherwise, uh, if you hang out with a bunch of idiots, you will become another idiot. Okay. 
So people with bipolar disorder, you should be very conscious and cautious in uh, seeing with whom do you associate. Otherwise, uh, every day is like Christmas and every day is like uh, whatever. <laughs> All right. So please make sure that you sit with the right people, hear the right people, uh, stay with the right people. Okay. Not just physically, even mentally. And then there is another disorder. You know, it's like eating disorders. Okay. So eating disorders are primarily caused by yeah, Jupiter Venus. Now, how in the universe does Jupiter Venus cause problems? Because we know if Jupiter aspects the moon, it's called Gajke Sri Yoga, right? <clears throat> Which means uh you are very uh, apparently you are very positive okay but yes indeed if jupiter and venus are individually spoiled in the chart and then they are uh, see if jupiter is well placed and it's aspecting moon and moon is also well placed it's a great thing to have but the problem is if jupiter or venus is not well placed and then they are affecting the moon then you may have a very highly bloated sense of self, you know, <clears throat> like Jupiter especially, it can give you narcissism, narcissistic personality disorder, you know. Uh, yeah, so Venus can also sometimes make you sociopath, psychopath and all this. Why? Because you feel that you have all the goodness. Jupiter, Venus represents goodness. So you have all the goodness. You know, you are superior. You are most beautiful. You are most charming. You are most attractive. You may or may not be, but this is what you think. And you also believe that, see, Jupiter, Venus represents, they show awards, okay, and admiration. So if Jupiter, Venus is badly placed and then they are affecting the moon, no, by aspect or conjunction, you feel you are the center of all limelight. You love to steal the limelight. You are very envious of anybody who takes away limelight. It's a typical case of narcissism. Did you ever imagine uh, Jupiter, Venus can give narcissism? Yes, they can if they are badly placed because they are the source of all the goodness of the world. And when they are afflicted, you don't feel that goodness. You don't get that admiration. So you are so desperate for that. That is why if Jupiter, Venus are bad in the chart and they are affecting the moon, guaranteed narcissism. 100%. And if they are good and then they are affecting the moon, it's the other way around. A person is very humble, very down to earth, very good. You know, so like we have uh, the case of Lord Sri Ram. Right, he ha he is Cancer Lagna with Jupiter and Moon in the Lagna. Jupiter is in Digbala in the first house and exalted in Cancer and with the Moon and Venus is also exalted in his chart. Right in the ninth house in the sign of Pisces, of course, in trines to the Moon. Okay, so no no ego, no narcissism, no boasting like Ravana would boast. You know, I'll finish everybody in one day. You know, all this blah 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 nonsense. Very aware of the surroundings, Lord Sri Ram. Okay, so therefore, it's interesting. Jupiter Venus gives <laughs> eating disorders, you know, overeating and all this, all from Jupiter Venus. They are also the karka for uh, sugar and sweet products. You know, do I need to say much? Anyways, <laughs> let's go to the next one and the last one. So, another disease which I am seeing very frequently, it is coming, you know. It's like, you can say it's like schizophrenia, but maybe it's like uh, some unusual weird experiences, you know. You, you could name it. Okay, so for example, <clears throat> people are having like, you know, they're having hallucination, they have, you know, del delusion, or whatever, or what not, you know, it's like um, they have different, they, they, they have a perverted sense of reality. It's like it has gone so bad that people, they think that 
illusion is the reality and the reality is the uh, an illusion basically okay <clears throat> so this this is primarily caused uh, by certain planets like rahu ketu and also i have seen uranus neptune and pluto sometimes you know if they are associated with the moon so moon and rahu moon ketu moon uranus moon neptune moon pluto conjunction and if they are in multiples like you know you have moon moon ketu together and your uh, moon ketu is in the seventh rahu is in the first rahu uranus in the first wow classic <laughs> so the person has a very uh, distorted sense of reality and the person actually believes that you know the person believes that oh this person is going to murder me and on the contrary it can happen that they are actually going on hurting somebody but they actually believe that somebody else is going to come and you know uh, attack them because they have a lot of time to go into all this nonsense so they believe everybody else is also like that like a thief believes every other person is a thief right so that's how it is you know and as i said uh, there are like endless psychological disorders you know you can go on and on um, searching them you know finding astrological clues but if you see these problems in a chart then you should try to identify it before the consultation and you should try to um, yeah inform the client in the best possible way to whatever extent you can so that you can help them all right okay ladies and gentlemen very interesting topic we discussed today you know five different types of psychological <laughs> disorders but yeah it's unfortunate that these things are happening but that's the reality these things are getting worse day by day all right so if you want a consultation my website is down below and if you are new then please like comment share and subscribe and hit the thumbs up okay god is there with you all the time irrespective of which psychological physical mental intellectual disorder that you have or even if you don't all right just look to him and you will surely find him thank you